This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Experience a Turkish bath. Pamper yourself with pleasure. Surrender to Turkish living. Savor traditional healthy cuisines. Embrace your dreams. Welcome to Global Village. I'm Buddy Kunana. Now you know folks on Philippine television, this is the, one of the few programs that really focuses on international affairs, culture, and uh, relationships. And uh, on this program, you get to meet interesting people, you go to amazing places, and we also talk about issues and topics that impact the global community. And tonight, folks, is a very special show because we're talking once again about my favorite country, one of my favorite countries in the world, Turkey. Uh, it's a regional uh, cultural powerhouse, economic powerhouse, ge geopolitical force, which has actually been undergoing a lot of changes recently, a lot of developments. And uh, joining us to talk about this fascinating country is none other than the Ambassador of Turkey to the Philippines, Her Excellency Ezra Jankarur. Ambassador, welcome to Global Village. Thank you very much, Mr. Kunal. And uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's uh, as I said, special special show tonight because uh, I, I really mean it when I say that Turkey is indeed one of my favorite countries in the world. I love your country, beautiful place. I'm there once or twice a year at least. And pleasure to have your excellency. Now, Thank let's you. talk about you first before we jump into the topic of Turkey. Tell us a bit about who is Ambassador Ezra Jankarur. <laughs> um, well, I have... I have uh, been born in Konya, in, uh, that is in the middle of, of Turkey. I have, been, I have been raised in Ankara and I entered the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 1989, end of 1989. And uh, I have been working in, in uh, Finland, Philippines, uh, Italy and France before coming back to the Philippines again. So this is my second posting in the Philippines. Yes. W I, when were you posted here first, Ambassador? Uh, from 1995 to 1997 as a second secretary. So it's it's a it's a pleasure to come back as an as an ambassador. It's it's an honor, and um, from different perspectives, from perspective of sentimental uh, feelings and nostalgia, and and to see the development uh, taking place in the Philippines, it's it's really a pleasure. Yes, and uh, 95 to 97, and you were posted here again yes. in uh, 2000. Uh, 14, I came in 2000, beginning of 2014. Yes, and I, so I, I'm in my fourth year now. I can imagine the changes must have been, must be. Um, I mean, to witness 
uh, fast forward almost 20 years. Yes, of course. I mean, in, Man in not only in Manila, outside Manila as well. For example, Tagay Thai. Tagay Thai has, has improved uh, immensely. It, also in Manila, the, the BGC, of course. Uh, when, when I was here, BGC was not there. I mean, there, it, was, it was basically a military base. So it's, it's, uh, it's nice to see the development, but it's also nice to see also some, some uh, buildings and everything is staying as it is because it's, it's, it brings back nostalgia. Very so, good, very yeah. good, Ambassador. Now, Ambassador, today is also a, a special show uh, because um, in a few days' time, we'll be you know, remembering a you know, very serious, very significant, uh, incident in your country, and I'm talking yes. about the July 15 uh, attempted coup yes. uh, against uh, President uh, Erdogan. Yes. And uh, what are your thoughts on this, Ambassador? Yes, uh, actually, we are going to commemorate the first anniversary of the 15 July um, uh, foiled coup attempt, which was perpetrated by the Fetullah Gulen terrorist organization one year ago. It was actually against uh, the, the democratic uh, system of Turkey and uh, the, the government of Turkey, but against the democratic institutions of Turkey. But, but uh, it may look like a military coup d'etat, but, uh, but in the traditional sense, it is not. It is, uh, we have never experienced anything like that in the history of the Turkish Republic before. It was the worst act of terror in our, in our Republican history, yeah. unfortunately. And, and we are still coming uh, into terms with this trauma. The, the, the political situation uh, went back to normalcy in, in within 20, less than 24 hours immediately after the coup. But, but uh, as I said, um, uh, the Turkish Republic and its people have never experienced any anything like this before. It was this this, this sheer terrorist campaign. So it's it's difficult to say that it's just a trad in the traditional sense it's a military coup. And first of all, Turkish armed forces uh, as a whole yes. did not participate in this in this uh, terrible act. Its commanders, the chief of staff, they were taken hostage. So um, it's only uh, a group of, of uh, a group of uh, people who call themselves soldiers, officers within the Turkish Armed Forces, but they are not actually. They cannot represent the Turkish Armed Forces. Yes. Turkish Armed Forces has a has a glorious history, um, more than one thousand years, and and. Uh, they, they cannot be from the Turkish Armed Forces. Although, Ambassador, there have been past uh, coup, uh, coup attempts and, and, and some successful ones in yes. Turkey in your history. Um, yes. <clears throat> how would you describe, the, I mean, why it would you say this is very different from those? It is different. I mean, Turkey, like the Philippines, is no, uh, of course, we had our share of military coups in the yes. past, but as I tried to explain, this was, this was a group of people who tried to do this attempt. And, and what, what was the common denominator? The common denominator was that they belonged to a special mafia-like, cult-like group, which we uh, declared as a terrorist organization as early as, as 2014, even before the, even before mm -hmm. the coup attempt. So um, uh, they had infiltrated into the, not only into the Turkish Armed Forces, but this group has infiltrated into, into state institutions uh, and other private sector and so on. What was the aim? That the aim was to control the Turkish state. And, uh, and this is, a, and their leader is Fethullah Gülen. He calls himself Imam of the Universe. Yes. And, and uh, his followers believe that he is the Messiah. And, uh, and they think that they themselves are the golden generation. So um, this explains why they were able to do, this group of people with, with, who have infiltrated in the Turkish Armed Forces, were able to do such a terrible act yes. of terror, killing more than, uh, killing 250 people and uh, wounding more than 2,000 people in the country, bombing, bombing uh, the state institutions, the president's uh, complex, presidential complex, the Turkish parliament, mm -hmm. which, is, which is the uh, landmark of, of, of Turkish democracy. Yes. So they have been bombing that. Um, and, uh, but but uh, thankfully, the Turkish people 
stood for their democracy. They went, they took to the streets, they went onto the streets to defend, to defend this. So we are proud of that. Ambassador, um, we all condemn extrajudicial attempts to seize power. We're all in favor of democracy. But um, a question I want to pose to you is, how would you react to, let's say, criticism from the West about yes. the crackdown that happened after the coup? You know, some people, you know, a lot of people actually condemned the, the, the crackdown of the coup. Uh, Secretary of State, then Secretary of State John Kerry, was very vocal about it. He said, you know, he condemned the brutality of it. How would you react to criticisms, the criticisms of that, of uh, the widespread jailings, alleged widespread jailings of, of dissidents and things like that? Well, uh, certain media, especially uh, Western media, was was uh, was very critical after the coup attempt, uh, and. Uh, we cannot understand why, because, like you said, military coups so should be should be criticized everywhere. I mean, and this was a military in the it was not a military coup in the traditional sense, but it was an attempt, a terror attempt, to topple the Turkish government. And this is no way accepted. If you want to have power over over uh, in a country, then you have to go through the democratic means, yes, not yes. not undemocratic means. So what follows afterwards is, is uh, one should not describe it as a crackdown also because uh, the Turkish government has the right, has the right to take the necessary means, uh, to take the necessary measures that, uh, to tackle with this problem because this was an existential threat to the Turkish, uh, to the Turkish state and any government would have taken the same, even more measures afterwards. So, um, as I said, we see yes. this as a matter of national security. And we also, uh, because this group is, is uh, using uh, all kinds of means. Uh, they are breaking codes of uh, legal, um, ethical, or uh, religious codes in order to advance in their interests. Yes. So it, they, and they use, they use uh, hypocrisy they use immorality and, and they use secrecy in, in doing these in these in doing these acts. Ambassador, it's been a year since that uh, aborted coup. What is the yes. situation today in Turkey? Has is it stabilized? Is it uh, has confidence returned uh, to the you know the confidence in the political uh, situation and in the institutions? Is everything okay in Turkey today? Uh, of course, yes. I mean, as I as I said, um, the the coup was thwarted within less than twenty four hours, but. But the trauma, uh, it's, it was a very traumatic experience. Uh, so coming to terms with that is, is taking time. But then the, uh, the political stability is there, the economic stability is there, although the economy also had some setbacks in 2016 as expected. But Turkish economy is strong and, and, uh, and, and, the, and the statistics are, are verifying that. So, yes. Yeah. And uh, today we have a vibrant economy. I mean, um, which we'll, we'll talk about later on. Uh, a lot of changes happening in Turkey, and um, and uh, s some of them have, have really impacted the economy. But uh, it's good to know that uh, Turkey is bouncing back and uh, has is, is experiencing renewed growth. And I understand that uh, Turkey is uh, the sixth largest economy in Europe. Yes, that's amazing. Yes, Turkey is is currently the the seventeenth largest economy in the world and sixth largest economy in Europe. I mean, we are a member of G20, we are a founding member of OECD, so we are a member to all major uh, economical institutions uh, worldwide. And um, we, but of course we are, we are uh, still an emerging market, so we have to, we have to, we have to work on that. I mean, in, in terms of the in the recent uh, years, especially in the recent decade, um, sound microeconomical policies, uh, prudent fiscal uh, policies, and and major structural reforms have been have been put in place. So that made Turkish economy strong, and um, and and for during the global crisis, economical crisis, for example, we were one of the countries that was least affected like the Philippines. Yes, very so, good. Very good. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Ambassador, we have to pause for a break, but when we come back we're going to be talking about uh, Turkey's relationship with the Philippines mm -hmm. and of course Turkish tourism and your plans and programs to move relations forward, you know, yes, in, in the remaining in, in the remaining time you have here with us. Thank, Thank you very much. So guys, stick around because more of Turkey's uh, culture and society when Global Village returns. <laughs>